and welcome to Sonic Before the Sequel Aftermath. I am One Mile Sheep yet again, and this year, ladies and gentlemen, is an absolutely fantastic but extremely short fan game developed by Lake Fepper, the same guy who did Sonic the Hedgehog before the sequel, and Sonic the Hedgehog after the sequel, as well as Sonic Chrono Adventure. And this is a bit of a different sort of Sonic fan game. It plays very similarly to the classic Sonic games, you know, it still has a classic Sonic physics, classic Sonic level sort of mentality, but this isn't a level-based game. Instead, this is more of an exploration focus game where we have to basically go from point A to point B to collect MacGuffins in order to explore this very small open world area. And uh, it's an interesting sort of experiment from what I recall that Lake Fepard was doing. And you sort of testing to see how people reacted to this and uh, from as far as I'm concerned, it's a pretty damn fun ride. It's something quite enjoyable. It's such a shame, however, that it is such a short game. Like this one 20 minute video, this is the entire game, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying. That red thing down there, those are littered about throughout the course of the world. We're going to be picking those up a bit later on, and I'm going to be explaining them as we move on a bit further into the game but um yeah like i said for the most part we're just going from point to point exploring this world and the entire landscape if anyone's played sonic the hedgehog before the sequel it'll look familiar to you because this all takes place in the same world as before the sequel in the same island you know this is basically the remains of the place after what happened in well, in the events of before the sequel, you know, folks, Sonic's come back here for some reason or another, and uh, we're basically exploring, trying to find out what that black thing that just ran away from us is, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty neat, it's pretty neat. But, um, this is so, when I say this is an exploration-focused Sonic game, I, it's kind of Metroidvania. Now, what do I mean by kind of Metroidvania? Well, basically, it's Metroidvania in regards to the fact that you have to collect MacGuffins to unlock your pathway so you can explore more areas, but... I don't know, it still seems really linear in comparison to most Metroidvania games, you know? if you, Basically, for the most part, you'll never find yourself really getting lost. If it feels like you're going the right way, chances are you are, which is something I do actually quite appreciate. But, um... Yeah, there's also a little compass at the bottom left of the screen you might notice as well that does nothing. Now, there is a reason for that compass being there, and I, like, I'm convinced this is basically Lake Fairford's attempt at doing, like, I guess it's more of a proof of concept up until he did Chrono Adventure, because Sonic Chrono Adventure is another fan game he did, which uh, basically takes this idea and fully fledges it out with a uh, whole compass system and everything, and that's why there's a compass at the bottom left of the screen, even though it does nothing here. But there are a couple of NPCs lying about as well that we can talk to. It's completely optional. It's just some world building, really. It's no reason for it. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Pretty neat stuff. Although one thing that you'll probably notice as well is at the top left of the screen, there's a health bar. This is something that isn't really in, um... This isn't in, in most Sonic games that often, and basically you can hold up to a grand total of 30 rings at a given time, and that those 30 rings will basically fill out your health bar. Now, you can still play this game the old school Sonic way, you know, keep one ring and you'll still live, but I don't know, it's a, it's a neat little idea, because every time you lose, you get hit, you lose 10 rings instead of losing all of them this time around, and... I guess it makes it easier to explore and what have you, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's an idea I can sort of get behind. But all of the areas that we're going to be visiting, with maybe one or two exceptions, are basically going to be areas we've seen before on Sonic before the sequel, maybe slightly remixed and whatnot, so, uh... Yeah, it's, a, it's not the most original game in the world, but it, it's... It's an original idea, and it's got a completely different level design and a completely different mentality behind it. So, you know, it's a, it's a fun ride. What can I tell ya? What can I tell ya indeed? But anyway, as you can tell, I actually picked up that red thing that I mentioned earlier on, and it came up with a little bit of an experience up sort of notification on the bottom left of the screen. Basically, those, are can, those can be used in order to level up one of the items we will be picking up basically in a few minutes now. And, um... As you get enough of them, the item will become more powerful and more useful, and I'll talk more about that in a second, so, uh... Yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's, 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 like I said, it's like more of a Metroidvania compared to previous, uh, things. And honestly, this is an idea that I'm 
surprised works out so as well as it, it does, because you would think a sort of exploration-focused classic Sonic game, it'd be a bit of a nightmare to sort of... It'd be a nightmare to navigate all the areas and whatnot, and it's really not that bad. It's not as bad as you would think. Although one thing that can get a little bit annoying is that a lot of enemies can't be killed in one hit anymore. You can't just spin into it, all the enemies and just kill them in one hit, because obviously this is... Metroidvania style, they, they they want to ha give you an excuse to use an upcoming item, which is actually a melee weapon. So, uh, you can't hit all the enemies in just one boop, so you're going to be f hitting them multiple times in order to destroy them in a lot of instances, which I'm not too fond of. It just slows down the pace for me, but, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. But, uh, yeah, these birds by here, their home has basically been destroyed by Dr. Eggman, so they've all sort of crept into Eggman's old dilapidated base under the, you know, just to take it over. I mean, makes sense. You know, Eggman destroys your home, why not steal his? It's perfect logic, you know? But uh, these these bird people, they, they're just sort of there just to give the game a bit of character, I think. They don't really have any sort of real meaning in this world. But this is where the game's major gimmick kicks in. This is the items that we can pick up. This is a sword. Oh my god, Sonic with a sword. Basically, you can switch your powers by pushing a button, and uh, this will open up a lot of extra pathways for us because we can actually use the sword in order to get through certain gates and what have you. And as you can tell, there is a little meter above... Well, right next to the compass, it's a little bit halfway filled. That's where the experience of the molds from those red orbs we picked up earlier on goes into. And uh, once that, once the sword levels up, it can do sword slashes. And once it levels up a second time, we can do like this spin attack that uh, annihilates enemies and what have you. And uh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Now I know a lot of people are probably going to be foaming at the mouths at the idea of Sonic with a sword because I, I remember when Sonic and the Black Knight first came out that people freaking. F Freaked out when uh, they found a Sonic had a sword, and I, to this day, I don't understand what the outrage is all about because it makes sense. I mean, he's a very fast-moving character. What if you were to give him a weapon? What would be most fitting? A sword. You know, it's. I don't know. I, I'm. I'm not. Maybe I'm not as picky as a lot of people. I don't know. I never. I just never thought the idea of having, giving Sonic a sword is bad. You know, it's. You can usually do some quite interesting things with with uh, swords and what have you. I don't know, that's just me, though. But, um, yeah, basically, it's, you use the sword to get through alternate pathways and whatnot and do extra damage to enemies, and... The big problem with using the sword whenever you have this power-up utilized is you can't use the spin dash anymore, and you can't use the spin jump, so, uh... You know, you are a bit... You're basically trading your defensive capabilities for more offense, you know, ladies and gentlemen. I do believe Sonic runs a little bit slower, too, so... You know, you are trading things off in order to use the sword power. You're not... You are going to be switching back to your classic Sonic whenever you want to go fast and what have you, which... I actually kind of like. I do like the idea that he sort of nerfed the powers a little bit, so... You still have an excuse to use the traditional Sonic skills. But, um... Any people who've actually seen the upcoming game by Lake Fairbird, Spark the Electric Jester, which is coming out on Steam next year, I think, at the time of this recording, I'm not actually sure. Um, a lot of mechanics that are in this game by here, they will look familiar to you, because a lot of mechanics that are here are being reused, from what I can tell, in Spark the Electric Jester, from the gameplay that I've seen and from the game I've... Well, I've actually played it, so... You know, there's a lot of uh, mechanics here that return in that game, and uh, you, it's kind of neat how you can sort of see him using his previous games in order to make his own original game later down the line. I don't know, I, 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 just, I just like that. You know, the idea of switching abilities out on the fly, switching out different powers, that, that originally originated from this game, and he's just taking that to a whole new level of Spark, the Electric Jester. But, uh... Yeah, I, d I don't recall the stage in uh, before the sequel. I don't know if this was a stage original for uh, Aftermath or if this was actually in the original before the sequel game. I can't remember. It's been so long since I played that last. Like, I think the last time I played Sonic before the sequel was when I did Let's Play on this on this YouTube channel about a, a year or two ago. So uh, it's been a long, long, long time, you know, ladies and gentlemen. So I can't recall if this area was in that game. 
But I do know a lot of areas in this game have been reused areas, you know, from before the sequel. A lot of areas are going to be pretty similar looking. But of course, I can't complain too much, you know, it is only a 20 minute journey. So it's, uh, you know, it's pretty dope. Of course, it goes without saying as well, don't go in the water for too long, you can drown. It, it is a Sonic game still, you know, it, even if it's a fan game that plays a little bit more exploration-y. It's still a Sonic game at the end of the day, so don't stay in the water too long. Try and go through as fast as you can. What can I tell ya? One thing as well that's also in this game is the Super Peel Out ability from Sonic CD, which is an ability that I, I swear to god I don't, I don't understand the point of. I, I, sometimes I use it and then curl up into a ball immediately, but um, I just don't see the point of the Super Peel Out. I might as well just use the Spin Dash. It's the same thing, but safer. I mean, why wouldn't I use the Spin Dash? <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I've never understood the appeal of the Super Peel Out other than the fact it looks cool. Uh, actually, I think that is literally the only appeal of it. It looks cool. I don't know. But yeah, the Super Peel Out is in this game if people like to use that. But there we go, we just leveled up our swords. Now we can do these uh, cool samurai sword slashes. And uh, I won't be showing off the fully powered up sword in this video because I actually don't know where all the red things are. And I do believe you need either all of them or the vast majority of them in this game in order to get the level 3 sword. So I don't show that off in this video because I actually have no idea where they all are. I'm just... This is like my second run through of the game and I'm just sort of wandering about just to show it off for YouTube, you know. And to actually get some content out of YouTube because Jesus Christ, I've been uh, I've been away for a while. And I do apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen, you know. Uh, but real life calls, real life takes the priority, unfortunately. And the fact I've been lazy as well, that doesn't help, but it's beside the point. But yeah, like I said, it's 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 a nice calming game. You know, this is it's really nice to just go in, explore, go through the levels, and uh, I don't know, it's just really calming. The music also quite helps with that as well. The soundtrack is really mellow, and I do believe that the majority of the soundtrack in this game is uh, reused from other places. Like this song right now, I know was in Sonic before the sequel, but. Um, I don't know about a lot of the other tunes. I think most of the music has been reused. I, I, I'm pretty certain about that, so. But you know, the music choices are pretty damn good. What can I tell? The other really chilled out beats. Perfect for exploring areas. Especially the song, you know, because this, this green area is basically the main hub world behind, you know, surrounding all the places you're going to be finding yourself going to, you know, folks? So, uh, yeah, there's that. There is that. But as I said, this is very linear, even though it's exploration focused, you know, you can easily just get to the end just by using common sense and just going where you basically would normally think to go, you know, folks. Like, I've got the new power, so, oh, maybe there's something I can break up over here. There is, so there we go. I break this and there's a new area opened up to us, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And I guess this sort of serves, like, this entire game sort of serves as a preview. I suppose to Sonic Chrono Adventure, like a little demo, because I will probably be LPing that in the future. I probably will after I get done with Sonic After the Future. After the Future? <laughs> Sonic After the Sequel on my channel, but um, yeah, this is basically a sign of things to come for the channel, I, I sort of guess. But uh, no guarantees on when I'm actually going to get around to recording those playthroughs, because obviously I want to actually do my... Uh, I do want to do my official Sonic playthroughs a bit more so before I get around to them and, you know, as opposed to fan projects. And I got other LPs I want to tackle as well, you know, and uh, I need to finish off a couple of a couple of LPs I've got on the go in the background behind the scenes, you know? So, I don't know. I don't know. I digress. Although I remember before when I actually did my uh, L initial LP of Sonic before the sequel, I did sort of see the controls in the Sonic World's engine games. They always felt a little bit off to me, they always felt a little bit funky, like really... I don't know, the momentum is... awkward. I don't know if they cha if Lake Fairport changed the controls in this, or maybe it's because I'm using a different controller or what. But I don't know, things seem a little bit smoother these days since uh, I did that LP. 
But then again, I was playing this game using a Sega Saturn controller, you know, because uh, it's my go-to 2D game controller. If it's a game that I feel would play very well on the Sega Saturn controller, I'll use that on my PC, you know, folks. And if anyone is wondering where you can actually get hold of this fantastic game, I will... Uh, I'll actually be chucking a link to the game in, you know, in the description so you guys can play it yourselves if you're so inclined, if you're so interested by it, you know, folks. And if anyone's wondering how I can play my Sega Saturn controller on my PC, well, I've got an adapter for it. But basically, this here, what we just picked up, is the rocket boots. We can use these to boost forward and backwards, and we can also use them as a super jump ability, where we just hold down the action button, charge up our energy, hold down up, and we can shoot off into the sky. And uh, basically, the rest of this, I think, yeah, I'd say pretty much the rest of this playthrough is basically us manipulating this power-up in order to get to the end, you know, folks, because... This is the last power-up in this in this game, you know, there's only two power-ups we get a hold of in this one. I do, I I think there's a lot more in Sonic uh, Chrono Adventure, you know, the, the proper sequel to this. Like I said, this is more of a proof-of-concept game that Lake Fep had made, more so than a full-fledged title, so... You know, it's still fun nonetheless, which is one reason why I decided to show it off on this channel anyway. Plus, I actually, it's part, it's officially part of the after the sequel, before the sequel series of Sonic games, and I want to get through those, you know? Because before the sequel is uh, is amazing, and Sonic after the sequel is uh, extremely amazing, you know? They are some extremely high quality fan games, something that... Actually, I'd probably say they're on the same level as official Sonic titles in terms of actual quality, you know? I, I, I adore the, the series of fan games. Lake Fappard's just a genius with these sort of things. In fact, there's a large reason why I'm, I'm excited for his upcoming original game, Spark the Electric Jester, you know, because that, that looks to be like a fantastic time, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Plus, the Sonic style of games, is, it's really weird how that's the, the Sonic style of platformer never really... It was never really cloned much, and people never really tried to emulate it that well, which... You know, it's really surprising, because people clearly love this style of platformer, but... Uh, I guess it's because all the physics stuff and uh, and what have you are really hard to program and whatnot, and copy to make goods, I'm assuming. I don't know. Of course I say that, but then again, these days we have loads of games coming out, like... Well, apart from the million fan games of Sonic that are out nowadays, uh, you know, this like the likes of Freedom Planet, which is a similar system. Actually, I think it runs on the Sonic Worlds game engine. I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm actually not sure. I th but that's an example of a, a Sonic the Hedgehog esque game. You know, you mean sort of taking the initial gameplay style of Sonic and doing their own thing with it. I'm surprised more games don't do that. It's I don't know. Like, you see plenty of games trying to emulate the likes of, uh, well, the original Doom, for example. There's tons of games emulate that. We've seen tons of Mario-ish games. I don't know. But anyway, if we go by here, there's actually a bit of a cheeky um, red MacGuffin. You're going to probably miss it. It's a really awkward one to pick up. I only It took me two attempts to get that, which is a lot less than it took me the first time. It took me, like, 20 attempts to grab that the first time. It's a really finicky jump to make. Trust me on that, ladies and gentlemen. Ah. But as you can easily tell, this is this is clearly not a speed-focused game. You know, it's all about exploring, looking where to go next. And we're actually heading up to the boss. The, the actual... The only boss in this game now, ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes. Basically, in a minute. Yeah, I wasn't joking. It's a really short time. It's a really short one, but... It's a cool one, you know? It's... It's different. It's a different experience, and sometimes that's what I like to see in my games. It's something different. I mean, I love to see normal games as well, just flat out use classic Sonic gameplay. That's why I'm a big fan of some of these fan games. Like, for most game studio, You know, not like game studios. For most franchises, I usually ignore fan games, but when it comes to Sonic ones, I don't know, they... I always, almost always seem to enjoy them when they're pretty well made, you know? But, uh, a bit of Flight of the Bumblebee music going on if we fight this boss. And this here is an easy boss fight. He's, gonna, he's just gonna occasionally shoot laser blasts at us and shoot down these bumpers that we can bounce off and, uh, slash him in the face with a sword. 
And that's basically all she wrote. It's a very simple boss. It's it, it's not challenging in the slightest. Um, from time to time, you'll shoot out these blocks. I don't know what they do. I don't think they even hurt you, so I don't understand the point of the blocks he shoots out. But there, there. He shoots them out. Bada bing, bada boom, I suppose. And every time you jump off the bumper, the bumper will actually disappear. So if you want to hit him, uh, try and wait for him to get close enough to you so you can actually take him down quick, you know, really quickly. If I had the level 3 sword right now, which was, which I'm actually very close to almost getting, I could actually take him out within a couple of seconds because that it gives you a spin attack that's extremely powerful when you use it in the air. But unfortunately, like I said, I don't know where the last... Um, the last mon the last bleh. what are those things called? I'm gonna call them just last experience orb. I don't know what the last experience orb is for it, unfortunately. But uh, with this, ladies and gentlemen, bada bing, bada boom, that's before the sequel done. I kid you not. That's that's the end of the game. We we are we're done with before the sequel aftermath. It's uh, you know, it's a simple ride. It's a pretty fun one, nonetheless. And honestly, I would actually recommend you guys to check it out whenever get the chance. But. Uh, that's it basically for this video, so thank you all for watching, hope you all enjoyed, don't be sheepish people, and I'll catch you all again. Bye!